Welcome everyone. My name is Pam Turner and I'll be the moderator for this evening's lecture. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many but we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew Greek nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt. He called Moses to top Mount Sinai, and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, 
a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered under the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This evening we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Darlene Webster. We will have a musical selection by Dr. Lisa Zizi. And we'll have a scripture read by Dr. Sherry Williams, which is Genesis, the first chapter. And our readers are Dr. Sherry Williams and Dr. Cynthia Smith. Okay, can we have Dr. Jennifer Marshall give us a prayer? Darlene's not on tonight. Let's all bow our hearts and minds and thank Yahweh for sending Yahshua to show us the truth about him and that we can know him as he really is and actually exists. We pray that we stay strong in this uh, unsteady world and hang in here as, and keep going. And let us all say hallelujah. 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 Let's keep going. The name of the song is Jerusalem, my happy home, and we can all think about this Jerusalem above. Jerusalem, my happy home, when shall I come to thee? When shall my sorrows have an end, thy joys when shall I see? Oh, happy harbor of the sons, oh, sweet. And pleasant soul. Indeed, no sorrows may be found, no grief, no care, no toil. Thy gardens and thy gallant walks continually are green. There grows such sweet and pleasant flowers as nowhere else are seen. Their trees forevermore, their fruit and evermore to spring. There evermore the angels sit and Our 
out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association Incorporated. Genesis chapter one. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim divided between the light and between the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And Elohim called the firmament he heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. And Elohim said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And Elohim called the dry portion earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth tender grass, the her herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth tender grass, herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself, after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And Elohim said, let the lights in the firmament of the heavens separate the day from the night. And they will be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth and it was so. And Elohim made to appear two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to lighten the earth and to rule by day and by night and to separate between light and between darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And Elohim said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and birds that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heavens. And Elohim created great sea monsters and every living creature that swarms with which the waters swarmed after their kind and every winged bird after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim blessed them saying, be fruitful and increase and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beast of the earth after their kind and it was so. And Elohim made the beast of the earth after their kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the ground after their kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his image 
In the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he him. And Elohim blessed him, and Elohim said unto him, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to every creeping thing upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their host. And on the seventh day, Elohim completed his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which Elohim created and made. That was Genesis chapter one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so to, tonight we have uh, uh, on deck or on uh, we have Pam and Lisa. Pam doing chaosis and Lisa doing the first day. And if they finish early, we have on deck Sarah and Tony doing the second and the third day. Um, so for our first speaker, I'd like to call on Pam Turner. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I don't think this is going to, I know my section is not going to be real long, so we'll see how this goes. But um, so I'm working with chaosis and that is um, the plate five here on the far right. And this, this series that we've been doing, we are working with the 40 plate chart. And as you can see along the top here, this states the chart on the vision of the divine pattern of the universe, proving the existence of Yahweh and manifesting his purpose by the physical creation through the dispensations and ages. So I was thinking about this because when we read in Genesis, you know, we, we talk about in this class how that this account, I mean, Moses was the, the author of Genesis, well, really Yahweh, but, you know, how would Moses know what to write if he, he wasn't born yet <laughs> to be there when everything was created? So we know it's just common sense anyway, um, that he would have to see this in a vision. And it only makes sense that in this 40 plate chart, when you look in these, in, in the beginning stages here, as we're getting started, it's going through, um, you know, it's going to get into the days of creation, but this is um, dealing with the chaos. This is dealing with just, just before the creation. And so that's what I'm going to talk about now. In the textbook, I, I would just wanted to read um, something real brief. I'm, I'm going to read a couple little short excerpts. I don't even think it's necessary for anybody to actually go. If you have your textbook there, that's great. Um, it's nothing very deep or it's not going to be long, but um, I just wanted to read a sentence out of this section. Um, if you happen to have your textbook, um, it's page 60, or this is going to be on page 57 of volume one. But, um, and this section, by the way, is called the divine pattern of the universe, and it is getting into the beginning part of the 40 plate chart. But um, this, par uh, this um, sentence that I want to read, it's in uh, the very first paragraph, um, about halfway down, it says, every event in the past, present, and that which is to come were foreknown and predestinated by the Yahweh Elohim of the stellar universe and precisely carried out 
according to the design and operation of the divine pattern of the tabernacle. So the reason why I wanted to bring out this sentence is because it, it just kind of points to the purpose of this 40 plate chart, along with the, the title of the 40 plate chart, seeing that it starts with plate one as being the tabernacle. <laughs> and this tabernacle, it, and we talk about how it's a slide rule and we can slide it across every story in uh, the Bible, as well as everything down through history, as well as um, all kinds of stuff in science. And there's various principles that there's so many principles. I mean, they're probably infinite in this tabernacle, but I'm, I'm just going to mention a, a few. So I wanted to bring this out about this tabernacle and how everything on this, this chart is is um, being broken down according to this tabernacle. And every plate here that we've gone over so far, it just happens to be in a downward um, downward direction. And so what does that even mean? <laughs> this might seem really weird to somebody that is, even if you were coming across this for the first time, what does that even mean? Why does it say down? The reason that's why that's referenced is because if you know anything about the tabernacle, um, you find out that there's a um, movement that, that occurs in the tabernacle with the high priest. And, you know, I don't know whether you want to say the starting point is up here, which you can argue for sure, because when you look at the principles, I mean, everything begins in pure spirit. And with um, Yahweh pure spirit and the whole creation came down from him and um, just like your soul comes down through from pure spirit and 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 then there's going to be a round trip so that's my whole point in mentioning this is just that there's a round trip so there's a downward and in, in some of the things that are being discussed and that with this chaosis plate the reason why it's down is because it's talking about this is prior to the creation coming forth and everything originates from Yahweh pure spirit and um, so let's look up the word chaos. Um, I couldn't actually find the word chaosis in the dictionary, but I think that uh, th that is ending. It, it's just designating. It does. It, it's designating a particular meaning, and I think that's what he had in mind with this word. But if somebody has, I'm going to look it up as well at the same time to follow along in dictionary.com chaos if somebody wants to if anybody has anything good on it i could always uh, read it too i have something that says um complete disorder and confusion mm -hmm. okay that's interesting i'm going to get back to that word confusion um and there's there's some more now i think yeah i'll, I'll t i'm going to get back to that in just a second keep going if you have anything more, I can uh, behavior so unpredictable as to appear random owing to great sensitivity to small changes in conditions. Uh, the formless matter supposed to have existed before the creation of the universe. That's cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I have that too. And in, in mine, I have one of the definitions is the infinity of space or formless matter supposed to have preceded the existence of the ordered universe. Um, I like this. So it talks about disorder and then the preceding the ordered universe. And, and the reality is, you know, there really is no disorder in Yahweh. It, it, there's just perceived disorder from our standpoint, because we can't understand Yahweh and pure spirit. And Joel made this comment to me this morning. We were kind of just chatting about some stuff. And he said, he said, you know, it's interesting if you look up chaos theory in physics, um, there's actually, it's, it's shown that there is, there is no chaos, re, re, truly. So I, I found that interesting that even in, in, in physics, um, that, so it, it shows forth that principle. And so here on this chart, we have now, well, I, let me mention this first, that 
you know, the way I'm seeing this is, you know, and we're, we're all students here still, and we're all learning ongoing. And so we're given this, you know, everybody's at different levels. And so we, you know, we volunteer. And so I'm given this, the, the best of my ability, the explanation here. Um, and, and see what, what's happening and, and basically is the descriptive elements in the beginning of the creation are being put into an order. I am hearing a weird like wind sound. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from, but um, anyways, so it the the describing of this coming of the creation, it's being put into into shape and form according to this tabernacle pattern, and here in this most holy place, you have um, it shows um, it says deep secrets of Yahweh. Um, it has spirit law and holy place. And what it says in the textbook, and this is on page 60 of volume one, it's saying that this is representing the most holy place occupied by Yahweh Elohim on his throne in which is hidden the deep secrets of the mysteries of Yahweh pertaining to himself and his universal spirit law operating in his creation, making darkness his secret place. And that's referencing Psalms 18 and 11. So I'm looking at this like, all right, this is darkness in the sense that it's the deep secrets of Yahweh. If you think about it in the most holy place, um, most of the year, except for the one time when there's a flash of the Shekinah, it's dark in there. You don't have access to that. Um, it's so it's dark to us. And so that's the secret place of Yahweh, this, this throne of Yahweh Elohim here. And coming down, so coming down from that, which the, is the, the direction because it's, um, you know, the creation is going to be coming forth. There's veils. So you see here on the edges, this is actually the veil. See, it says carboniferous face of the deep. It would be a, really located here below the holy place. If you can see my arrow, my cursor, I don't know. Can you guys see my cursor or no? Does that, that probably doesn't show up. Let me get my other arrow. I can see it, but it's very small. Okay. So this separation here, this is what is the, the this veil. And, and, and it, it mentions this in the textbook as well. It says, coming through the second veil, this is called the second veil because down here would be the first veil. Coming through here down, um, it, it's expressed by the thick carboniferous blackness that covered the face of the deep and reveals the wind or spirit of Elohim moving upon the face of the waters. So this is just the blackness because there's no light yet. And so it, this is being manifested as a, a, a separation. And then the next, in this next um, plate, this is, this is like an intermediate. Now, going back over when I was talking about the tabernacle and how there's different principles, you can see them, let me get my arrow, you can see them typed on here. It's a little bit kind of funky the way it looks like all of this is in the whole most holy place. But when we talk about this breakdown of the, the tabernacle, especially like, for instance, according to the Godhead, we have there's an abstract state in the in the most holy place, which would be Yahweh pure spirit, there's an intermediate, which is um, which is, it's just intermediate because like, for example, it would be looking at water versus steam or, or looking at, um, sorry, steam versus, um, oh my gosh. Okay, I will get this right. <laughs> intermediate would be looking at water versus either steam, which would be the um, abstract and 
uh, ice would be the solid. So that this is the intermediate state, and then the concrete state would be um, would be ice, or or it would be obviously you know Yashua the Messiah it would be the earth plane. So over here, this is where spirit. Um, there's a manifestation of spirit, and um, I want. Let's read Genesis. Let's start at the first, that very beginning of, because this is where the spirit comes in, and this is what's being shown here on the in this middle plate, and and it does show here Genesis one and two, but you can start at one and one. Genesis one and one. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. And the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So that's um, the second verse there. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So you have that that um, carboniferous face of the deep separating, and then it said, um, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters and you see the spirit and it's very bright here and this also correlates with the lampstand in the um, holy place moving down and then there's another veil we have um it's written on this veil it, it shows like curtains <laughs> which kind of is funny but dividing spirit and the waters and then that is this would be this line right here the separation and in the textbook still on page 60 um it mentions coming through the first veil into the outer court is the ethereal darkness surrounding the face of the waters that covered the chaotic earth wherein Satan and his hosts were cast in the beginning of the physical creation. Okay, so this is very, this is right before the beginning of the physical creation. There's chaos, which we would also, you know, we oftentimes will correlate the earth plane as chaos, um, just like Egypt and the, the chart, the Moses chart that blackness down on the, the bottom. Let me get to it. Whoops, it's not letting me. Hold on a second. So down here on the bottom of the Moses chart, this blackness down here in Egypt, and it would be, you know, we all there's principle of chaos down here because of all the plagues that were poured out and just all the death and destruction. It's just was just a terrible time and then when you look at the world and the world even though it is orderly because it's going according to Yahweh's purpose and it's going according to this tabernacle pattern like I, I've um, shown already there's a principle of the, of the of the chaos and it's appropriate that that's where that mystery of iniquity would be cast down to because this is really his kingdom. And this is where the, now in this, in this plate down here, this lower plate, this is where water is, is brought in. And, and we have water in the court roundabout in the, in the um, tabernacle um, here, this tabernacle pattern. Let me get my um, arrow again. I keep pointing with my cursor and I just, <laughs> I forget. Um, so yeah, we have the, in the labor. So you can see how these different principles are showing forth and it's just breaking it down. Um, and it, it's pretty simple. Um, let me see here if there's anything else I wanted to bring out. Um, Okay, in this little paragraph here in the um, that I was reading out of coming through the first veil into the outer court is the ethereal darkness. Um, 
And, and when you look that up, it, it's just pretty much talking about the heavens. So it's a little bit different from what would be the carboniferous blackness. It's more because it's down here. It's actually, um, it's like matter. I, I believe it's more of a like, see, it says inorganic earth altar. So there's some matter, but it just isn't formed yet. It, it's not, it's starting to become formed because you have a separation between the ethereal darkness would be, which would be the heavens and then the water. And which is what that fa that face of the deep, which is the, the waters. And so um, into the outer court is the ethereal darkness surrounding the face of the waters that covered the chaotic earth, wherein Satan and his hosts were cast in the beginning of the physical creation. And it says also here in the textbook in parentheses, see brazen altar and labor, which I also um, already mentioned. And then also Ephesians 2 and 2. So let's see what that says. Ephesians 2 and 2. Oh, this is cool. You can start at 1. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Okay. I'll keep going, sorry. <laughs> the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay, so this is that spirit that was cast down. And being that dead in trespasses and sins, that is that state, that is that... Um, you know, even once the earth is formed, it still lines up with that, that state of chaos in the earth plane. But this is that, this is just showing forth that, um, that mystery of iniquity, that, that prince of the power of the air. And Ephesians 6 and 12. 6 and 12. <clears throat> For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. So it's picking up that darkness, uh, equating that darkness to the earth plane. Mm -hmm. So that is it, guys. That's all I have. <laughs> Look forward to hearing mm -hmm. the next plate gotten into. Pam? Yes. Before you leave, didn't you say that you wanted to get back to the definition that Carol gave you on chaos? Oh, um, yeah. So what I meant by that, and I, I, I mentioned it briefly, and I, I don't know if everybody caught it, but when she brought out the, the word um, disorder, I was um, that's when I talked about the fact that it's an appearance of disorder because there really is no disorder. And then I brought out the thing about the chaos theory and physics. So even though there's an appearance of it and, you know, we can't see into Yahweh pure spirit, but they're, they're really, it's not really chaos and darkness, but, and that's why I like how in this definition, it also says the infinity of space or formless matter supposed to have preceded the existence of the ordered universe. So it makes it sound like there's no order until the, the universe comes in. But we know <laughs> that um, there is order to Yahweh. It's just that you don't have access to it. He had to bring everything in to be visible for us to understand him. So what would the chaos actually be would be my question. What would the chaos be? Yes, actually. What is it actually? Yeah. Um, to me, it is the darkness the chaos and the confusion of the disorder right is 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 in the carnal mind yeah uh, yes absolutely yeah mm -hmm. that's right thank you for bringing that out because i i wasn't taking it that far at this point but absolutely um and, and that is manifested in um these scriptures that were brought out in ephesians 
and also showing forth, you know, just the state of, of existence in Egypt, which is really where the world is if you're not in, in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Nice job. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the comments. And I'd like to make one too about that, you know, and just thinking about how that we didn't know anything, 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 anything <laughs> about our creator. And that was total darkness, total, mm -hmm. you know, and it just goes back to Exodus, Genesis, Exodus with the plague, the ninth plague that he poured out that darkness so much so that you couldn't see the hand in front of your face you know yes good point oh and, yeah i forgot about that thank you <laughs> that's a then, really good one and then we've most of us probably or many of us have probably experienced it literally so in a blackout you know mm -hmm. having having lived in throughout you know a blackout of physically in a form, you know, in our city or town or whatever, you know, and um, stomping your toe in the darkness and, you know, <laughs> and uh, just being, a, now we're more aware of how, how, uh, I, the words, how it could actually feel, how, you know, now that we have a little light, we can feel how that darkness felt. I, I don't know if that's making sense. <laughs> you know, when you look back and see where we were and where we are, you know, you can you can kind of mm -hmm. feel that feel that you were in darkness. Mm -hmm. Not just see or understand, but actually feel that and that you don't want that ever again. That feeling of being unaware of something or you know. I mean, even physically in, in our daily lives, we don't really want to be unaware of something, you know? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So, words. Uh, Pam? Yeah. There's another strange um, meaning under chaos, and I don't understand it. I don't know if anybody else does, but it says the first created being from which came the primeval deities got Gaia, G-A-I-A, Tartarus, Erebus, and N-Y-X, Nynx, I don't know how you say that. Mm. Does anybody know what any of that means? No, it must be. That, that's in Greek mythology. Um, uh, Gaia is the earth. I don't know what Tartarus, Erebus, and Nyx is, but um, yeah, it was a Greek god. Uh, mm -hmm. chaos but uh, I was thinking too um, you know complete disorder and confusion that, that's definitely a carnal mind but you could also use it that to define hell you know mm -hmm. and um, so that mystery of iniquity was cast mm -hmm. down into hell and that was at the beginning and um in the ending, he's going to be cast into that lake of fire, you know, with his angels. And isn't he wrapped in chains of everlasting darkness? darkness? Yes. Everlasting. Yep. Good one. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Any more comments or? Questions? I had another little, little question. It's probably. Um, a silly one, but I noticed in the most holy place, it says holy place. And um, then I looked back at the theosis where, you know, Simon and I had, and I noticed they had the first six attributes all in the most holy place. So maybe there's a, a merging, if you will, of most holy place and holy place in that plate. Hmm. I just- It's at, it's it's at the my, top there, Sheree. It's at the very top of the heart. It says most. Oh, okay. My bad. Okay, no, thank you. <laughs> no worries. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Um, Pam, also in the, in the textbook, when it talks about that um, Yahweh, the mystery, it says, 
um, the most holy place occupied by Yahweh Elohim on his throne, in which is hidden the deep secrets of the mysteries of Yahweh pertaining to himself and his universal spirit law, operating in his creation, making darkness his secret place. And there's a scripture in Psalms 1811. Yeah, and, go ahead. You want to get it? Or what? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, what I was gonna yeah, say. Well, it's, it's Psalms 1811. He made darkness his secret place. Mm -hmm. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. So it's it's darkness, it's secret. You know, I mean, that's the reference that it's picking up in the textbook, although everything that we talked about is all too, because th these are all allegories that we're all looking at, you know. Mm -hmm. And the cha chaosis is, it's all, just the word itself is just, you know, it's, this is that's just the beginning of the start before the first day you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. so it's just starting to separate and he's his secret place is in and, and this chart starts at the top you know this 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 plate i mean or this day or the chaosis you could keep reading there in psalms too yeah i know i was looking at that too um because it's kind of Lisa? Lisa with us, Lisa? Like, I can I'm can. i sorry, I hit the mute. I was oh, the oh okay. Oh, sorry. I'm getting <laughs> away thinking I'm doing good. Um, so in Psalms 1811, he made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. Yahweh also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And that kind of just goes, I don't know, how, how far do you think I should read? So, oh. well, I mean, well, 15 and 15. Okay, then the channels, uh, okay, uh, 14. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Yahweh, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. So, so this here in Psalms is just, you know, the witness and the prophets for the chaosis that's described back in Genesis. Mm hmm mm hmm it sounds like a tornado, right? And the weather is power. I mean, you think of air is, you know, oh, we can't see it. That wind, when it picks up, it is powerful and it can destroy things depending on its, you know, you can't even see it. It's yeah. so powerful. It's incredibly powerful. And it gets dark and black out before all this happens. Mm -hmm. too. And so this is when he's coming down and his, it's his secret. It's, it's just when he's starting to separate, which before this, if you would have said the word cosmogony or chaosis, I would have just like, you know, I would have stared back at you like, I don't, I have no idea. I can't even talk about it, you know, and, and here we are looking at it. And it's explained here slowly how he's coming from how he's creating the, the universe aside from the spiritual, which is really more important is the spiritual aspect of what this is showing us because the darkness that we are experiencing, not knowing Yahweh is way more important than any, you know, the physical creation, but that's still profound when you're reading this. Mm -hmm. So to continue, I guess, does anyone have anything else to say? Cause then I'll just go to the first day. I was just looking at Gen Exodus also when mm -hmm. they came to the mountain and they mm -hmm. talked about it thundering and mm -hmm. yeah. lightning and darkness. And they and were- Right, and that was him. Uh -huh. And uh, and Moses was in there. Uh -huh. And that's why they feared that he would not return. <laughs> right. It's the uh -huh. secret. That's just you know. So when I read, that, you know, when I saw that, because I was trying to you know prepare for the first day, and it it's, it says that the um, it, mysteries and operating his making darkness his secret place. So it's there's so, so many representations, I guess, of all the physical things that, that are out here. Um, 
so just continuing that. So this is the next, the, the first day is just, so, and remember, we've gone over this in class many times, but there's no sun until the fourth day. So we're talking about the first day, which is separating the light from the darkness. And there's no sun. So we're talking about a different light. And so when you're just looking at it, so on that, on, on plate five, so Pam was working in four. And when you when they when they talk about it in the textbook, it's coming down in plate four, the chaosis, coming down from the top. Um, you know the the spear eternity, and that's coming down, and that's at the bottom of you see in in the bottom part of plate four, that's where the, or, the earth is starting to form. So then in this plate five, which is the first day, that's when, and it says inorganic earth, which is no life. Inorganic means no life. And um, that's, the, so this is the separating between the light and the darkness. And he just says that um, when you begin, you start in the outer court, that's the beginning of the inorganic earth. And it is surrounded by water, which relates to the, so always you flip, always go back to the pattern because that's your key. That's your, that's the, that's how you center yourself again when you get off and, you know, you're like, well, what is that about? You got to go back to the, what is in the pattern? In the court roundabout, there's the, um, the burnt, altar of burnt offering, there's the labor of water, and then there's the holy anointing oil. So then there's the inorganic earth, which is similar or allegorical to the altar of burnt offering, and then the waters are surrounding it. And then it, it talks about how, um, like it says in Genesis 1, how the spirit, like Pam said, moves upon the face of the waters. And so that when, when you, when the first day is the light from the darkness. So this is where the middle part, that's where the spirit's passing on the waters. And it says on that chart, um, on plate five, it says on the on the veil, which I can't read it now. Can you go back to the- Hey Lisa, I think you should be on plate six. Oh, the oh, first, I'm sorry. The first day. You're right. I was reading. I was saying the wrong word. So let's go to six, but I was kind of referring to five. So I'll go with six. So when Pam was talking about hers, hers came down. So in the bottom of this chart, this is the inorganic earth, and this is where you're going up. And so this is where the earth is surrounded by the waters. There's the water and the steam. Is this a different example of plate six? Okay, that's cool. So there's the organic, inorganic earth. Um, there's the water around it. And then the, that spirit, I guess there's like a little representation of, of, of what, you know, the world looks at the spirit, which is what be like a dove, but the spirit moving on the face of the waters, that's creating in the middle of the twilight, the semi-light, the evening. So the, on the veils, it says bet, um, division between evening and morning. So really all this is, is the middle part is, is the semi-light, you know, um, as compared to the candlestick, because then the candlestick was in this area. And then the next part is just going up. And when you pass through the second veil, then that's where the throne of Yahweh is. And the light, the, the, the light was that was there was him between the wings of the archangel. And that's compared to, um, it just talks about in the textbook um, that the darkness was abolished by cosmic light. Um, and if we go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, Hey Lisa, yeah. let me know if you want the other forty. That's okay. It's good, I, you know, I, I brought this one up because we had some people had requested it before. Yeah, no, no, no. It's all good. You know, you, you and there are all these different little. Like, we're just trying to use pictorial illustrations of talking about something very profound. You know, so the principle is that's okay. Um, the principle is is that on this chart we're going up. We're starting with um, where the inorganic earth is surrounded by water and the spirit moves on that wa moves on the waters and it starts to separate the light and the darkness. So in the in between is the semi-light or the twilight, like it says. And then up at the top, that's if you get like it says on that chart, Second Corinthians four and six. Once you get that. Second Corinthians four and six. For Yahweh who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness had shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh in the face of Yahshua the Messiah. Which is, that's amazing. 
verse. <laughs> well, he, 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 that, so that's what's happening. He's commanding the light to shine out of the darkness. And so that's he shined in our hearts. And that cosmic light up there wasn't the sun, wasn't a candle, you know, wasn't your flashlight. Or, you know what I mean? We all got examples of light that we got to use to shine in the darkness. But that right there, when that, you know, that is the cosmic light, which is, that's the start of the difference or the division between light and darkness. And so that's what that, that um, verse, that, that, that plate or that um, day one was about. Um, it says their wings, okay. Um, yeah, so in the cloud above the mercy seat. So this says, I'm just reading the textbook because it helps a little bit to kind of follow along. Um, finally passing through the second veil, indicating a division between light and darkness, we come to the most holy place, a type of heaven, wherein is the throne of Yahweh. It was here that the command, at the command of Elohim, the darkness was abolished by cosmic light as compared to the most holy place where Elohim, who is identified by light, right there in that verse, he abode in the cloud. He was in that cloud above, in, in the, above the mercy seat between the wings. So then that the evening and the morning were the first day. And then um, just like it says in, in four and six, that just like that cosmic light abolished the darkness, then he's going to shine in our hearts. And that's what happens to us when we see something about Yahshua. And it's, a, it's just a little, little tiny light will, or not tiny, but when you, you see anything, what you might describe as small, you see anything, that is the light shining in the darkness. And, and you know, a little tiny candle in your room when your lights go out, when the storm hits, that candle will keep you going because until, you know, until you can get your lights back on. So that's all I really have for that, um, that day. I don't know what else to say. I was, I was like, why did I even think that I could even talk about that? But this is, it's in the textbook. And then when you start looking at the pattern, and then what he says, and then you just look at the principles and that's, and, and so one day at a time, he's showing how he did the creation, which is really quite profound, even just talking about it like this. So aside from the spiritual aspect from it. So I'm, I'm done. I don't know if anybody else can go next, but that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody want to make a comment or uh, I do, I do have a question um, as it, the not this plate but the plate prior that pam had up the plates that she had up prior to this version of them um it said carboniferous plate um on the chaos um mm -hmm. on the top of the veils and then it also had in the middle section and um, most holy in the it said it on the most holy place veils and the holy place in the middle of it um can somebody enlighten me a little bit on that because i know that when we're talking about prehistoric when you know that that's like kind of first when you know when you look it up and stuff like that but um what does that mean on the plate um anybody have an answer <laughs> um well if you look up uh carboniferous it's, mm -hmm. um, it's a particular, let's see, it says the Carboniferous, the fifth period of the Paleozoic era, or the system of rocks deposited during it. Um, so, Pam, I'm getting out of feedback. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, it, it's, it's basically back... You know, I mean, according to mankind's theories, concepts, and opinions, it's it's back uh, you know, way back in time, okay, um, you know, where the first living things supposedly came about, but, um, you know, it's in, in Yahweh's purpose, um, you know, you know, all this that's going on, okay, back on all these charts, you know, is, is occurring in, in the day of eternity, okay, and um, so, Carboniferous just means it's it's smoke like. Okay, now what that's one one thing that the, the planet Earth has, a couple things about the planet Earth that makes it suitable for life as opposed to other planets is that it has a lot of carbon. 
and all life is made of carbon. Okay, so um, so you so when a volcano erupts, it spews um, uh, uh, vast amounts of carbon. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a, a period of time not too long ago in the 1400s that a volcano in um, in Polynesia, and I can't remember the name of it right now, but it erupted and it caused the earth to basically, uh, especially the Northern latitudes to remain in a winter like state for many years because so much carbon was spewed into the, the atmosphere. So when Yahweh was, you know, uh, he's, he's, this all occurred, you see, um, instantaneously mm -hmm. and that he's just breaking this thing down mm -hmm. piece by piece. So, um, you know, if, if, if you look at it this way, then see back in time, uh, or not in time, but back, okay, if, if you can, you know, when Yahweh slowed it down for Moses, okay, uh, there would be a, a uh, you know, uh, a formation of the earth where there was lots of lava and that um, the, the atmosphere would be filled with uh, a, a carbon carbon uh, gases, it would be dark, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and this mm -hmm. this is how the, the, the scientists explain it too, that during the development of the earth. So, so carboniferous just means it's full of carbon, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, carbon gives a, a black smoke and produces darkness, all right? When you, when you see um, somebody with an old car, all right? Another example and they're spewing out tons of black smoke out of the back. That's because it's burning oil and releasing carbon gas. Okay, so, so it's, it's, it's a black, dark um, cloud, if I can put it that way. And, um, you know, definitely if the earth was covered with that kind of atmosphere, um, it would be in a, in a state of ethereal darkness uh, a state of chaosis, um, you know, like Sherry was talking about when the lights go out, the, the whole world was in darkness because of that, that carboniferous gas. Okay, so, um, so, so as far as, um, you know, uh, you know, it being, you know, I can see the principle of it being a veil because Yahweh's not in that darkness, okay? He's, he's, he's light itself. So the earth was veiled with that, okay? And the secrets of Yahweh, the spiritual things that w was going on were veiled as it were by this carboniferous gas. And like I said, all physical things, the, the, all the flesh, if I could put it that way, is made of carbon. We are, um, you know, if, if you watch science fiction, you see, um, they describe humans as carbon-based units, okay, or, you know, and we are. Our, all our amino acids that make our proteins, um, you know, uh, all, all your, your muscles, your bones um, uh, are basically made of carbon, oxygen, uh, and um, hydrogen and nitrogen primarily, okay. And, um, the, the other thing about the earth though, too, is the, um, that allows life is, is the presence of water. You know, there's, you know, they're trying to find life on Mars. <laughs> they should try to find life on the earth. Okay. And I'm talking spiritual life. Okay. <laughs> you know, and they're, they're, they're looking at Mars looking for life, but there's no water on, on, on Mars. All right. And um, so there, there's, there's no life there. They're, they're looking for life that's 300 million years old or something like that. And there's, there's a real cool, um, I just looked up carbon and carbon is the atomic number six and six represents the flesh, right? Right. Exactly. And that, and carbon's atomic number six. And it was really cool because it said, um, there's two main forms in carbon, which is diamond and granite. 
and you know how you have the pure and impure kind of form there so i thought that was kind of cool principle as well that is cool so anybody else want to add yes i i too in looking up carb carboniferous it's producing or containing carbon or coal of course as you talked about and in, in the textbook, it took us to Psalms, the 18th chapter, to verse 11. But if we go up a little bit to verse 8, and this, I think, uh, someone was talking about, too. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils. And I think you, Joe, were talking about that. And fire out of his mouth, devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet and he rode upon a cherub and this is of course David right talking in the Psalms and he rode upon a cherub and did fly yea he did fly upon the wings of the wind someone was talking about that he made darkness and this is 11 where Lisa had already picked up and he made darkness his secret place um his pavilion round about him where were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed hailstones and coals of fire. Yahweh also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. So again, referencing that, and that was, a, Psalms 18 was picked up in that section that Pam had, wait, five. That, mm -hmm. That's really cool because it's like he's seeing this vision. Mm -hmm. And there's just aspects of the vision coming out in, in this, these verses. That is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. I have a um, kind of comment, a question also. Um, when it talks about Yahweh making darkness his secret hiding place but then also saying that the light shineth in the darkness so i'm trying to correlate like how can i put it how do how is how is yahweh like making darkness his secret hiding place like the mysteries of yahweh is in the darkness but also the light shineth in the darkness. So I guess I'm not really understanding how, like what, what is he saying? Like the light, we know Yahshua is the light, but like when he's hiding in darkness, but it's his secret hiding place. And also there is light, which is also him and it shineth in darkness. There's like how can you explain that better? There's an example of that back down in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with the cloud who saw mm -hmm. the cloud being a cloud of light by night the Egyptians Israel. no the children of Israel oh. oh okay so it was a cosmic light or a vision of light Yahweh said I form the light and I create darkness mm -hmm. you go back to plate 5 and it says in the court roundabout, ethereal darkness. That's not physical darkness. That's a celestial darkness. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. a heavenly darkness. That's something that Yahweh creates that Moses had to have a vision to, to, to see it. I guess because I guess there's a point where it says, well, that's, that's Yahweh's secret hiding place. So that's the, like, I guess it's so profound that you wouldn't think that I, like the creator has a secret hiding place. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like what, what is he saying about the darkness? Well, Tara, you also have to take into consideration the light and darkness that we look at as light and darkness wasn't created yet because he's talking about, <sighs> it's a spiritual thing. You know, it's like, we look at light and darkness. Okay. We can't see anything. That's dark. Oh, there's light. Okay. We see something. When you're talking spiritual, it's a whole different realm. It's it's eternal. It's it's something that we can't quite grasp because we haven't really experienced it. But it it is it's like you know how oh a light bulb went off in our head. You know it's it's an awakening. It's I, that's how I I I'm like perceiving it. It's more like um, because right now 
the light and darkness he's dividing is the light of who no, like Yahweh and you know the demons like who you know it, it's that that spiritual division because the next one is going to be the where you know on the fourth day where there's the light in the day and dark for the night to rule over the night the sun and the moon but right now it's more of it we got to get off the physical sometimes to, but it, we can't because we're stuck in these physicals but it's it, it's kind of a different concept because it's more of a it, it's spiritual you know it all it's it's really a form of of a spiritual division at this point of what that stingent darkness is and him being that light it's it's like an understanding like how um bob pointed out is that carnal mind you know it's like we're we're stuck in the darkness until we get that awakening with the actual within us of you know who yahweh really is so um i don't i'm, I'm just so he, now okay. so, so i'm trying to because maybe i'm complicating it so when he says his darkness is his secret hiding place is he saying that basically that mystery of iniquity or that ignorance is that is that mainly is what he's saying Pam I was going to say um, if, Pam, if I could um, we know how we read in I think it's John the first chapter where he says he lied if every man that cometh into the world something like that I know I'm not quoting it verbatim but you know how that he is the he's spirit of life and he gives every human being the physical life that they have. But and, and, and we preach it all the time that, you know, Yahweh is that voice been speaking to you all your life, but you didn't know it. He, he's in them, but they don't know he's there. So you understand what I mean? So that's like the light, you know, um, shine, shining in darkness and the darkness don't comprehend it. And plus, you know, he's there, but they don't know he's there. And they're walking around in darkness because they have no, no understanding. You know what I mean? They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They don't know where Yahweh is. You know, so I would say that would be uh, they're walking around in stingent darkness, spiritual darkness rather. But Yahweh is there giving them physical life. So you see darkness is his secret hiding place. Oh, okay. He's in there, but okay. he, they don't know he's there. Okay. He, he, he's not darkness. He is no, no. He's just he from he's keeping people in darkness. Like you know, like you weren't aware of him before. You know, and if you look at it, we were in darkness. None of us were aware of him prior to coming into these classes, these schools, and being taught and learning of him. But he was always there. But we, like Sheree is saying, we we didn't know that. Okay. In, in, okay. In the Damn. textbook too, to Ray, it all, it, on Tara, Tara, it also says, it's it, the, the throne of Yahweh in the most holy place in which is hidden the deep secrets of the mysteries. Right. So, but right. so that's, that's all a deep secret and a mystery until right. he shows it to he reveals us. reveals it. Um, right. Yeah, because I was, I was when you read that, that it was darkness in the most holy place until that flash of mm -hmm. the Shekinah, but Yahweh was always there, but it, until that flash shone, then they really can't, you really can't see him, but that's where he dwells. So I'm not trying to correlate like he's darkness, it's just when he said that's his secret hiding place, I guess I didn't think of that. He's, he's there, but until the light goes off, mm -hmm. you don't really understand it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And even okay. when you're reading something, like you read the scriptures, you read the law, the prophets, the fulfillment, or you read the transcript or the textbook, and then all of a sudden, what do you do? You say, I see, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know, you're understanding. It's a, it's a seeing of under, it's a okay. light of so understanding. It's, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's seeing through the darkness. You're looking through, you you can see through the darkness. Because mm -hmm. he okay. used that to keep us, keep you know, like in, in, with the children of Israel, that ninth plague. He put the Egyptians in darkness, but there was light in Goshen. Okay. You know, and okay. that was Joshua. Okay. They had physical light. That was just a physical example. There was 
the light in Goshen, but the rest of the world, if you could say it like that, was in darkness. In darkness. Okay. Okay, I got it now. It was, okay. <laughs> and another, and, uh, and also when uh, Yashua, when he walked the face of the earth, he the only, he was the only light on that on, on that whole earth. He was the only light. Everybody else was in darkness. <laughs> is the light, okay. isn't that what until, the day, until the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. he was the only light walking around the whole earth. Yeah. And, and that was a secret to them. They didn't, they, that was his, he, they didn't know he was the light of the world. They, he, they didn't know he gave each and every one of them the, the, the breath of life. And he was walking around with them. So it was a secret. <laughs> and he was walking around in dark. Everybody's around him. Everybody, every, everybody around him was in darkness. Everybody but him. Okay, okay, I get it now. So the darkness is like the mystery. Mm -hmm. When he when he says he, that's his secret hiding place, that's like the mystery that people can't see or can't understand. Right. Okay. We experience right. that every day with with the carnal mind. You know that they can't, they don't see it. They don't. You can talk and talk and talk. You know. And uh, I told somebody about antibiotics, and then she's gonna throw that back at me like, like she, but she, I understand. I understand that Yahweh just didn't show her that, you know? So she's gonna come back and say, oh, natural stuff, but yet she's always sick. So what are you doing? I mean, <laughs> you know, and I didn't say that. So what are you doing though? You know, you're talking about, oh, oh, natural stuff is better, but you, you know, you got all this stuff going on. And I, I mean, that's just a physical example. That's not, you know, but. Okay, I got it. Hey, Pam. Real, real uh, quick. Yes, yes, Bob. Could you show the Moses chart real quick for a second? Yeah. Can you see it? I can't, no. Everybody else, you guys see it? I see yeah, it. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, I see it. How come I can't see it? Hmm. Well, anyway, zoom in on the Red Sea. And let me know when you get there. Okay, I'm there. Okay, what do you see in the midst of the Red Sea? Okay, I see it now. Mm -hmm. Darkness with the darkness and light. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's in a circle. Uh huh. With Moses' rod. Right. right. It's the same cloud that's light unto Israel mm -hmm. and darkness unto the Egyptians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same cloud. Mm-hmm. Wow. I guess okay, now it makes sense because it's it's your mind, it's your understanding that what you see when you look at the same thing, but you two people can be looking at the same thing but not see mm -hmm. something. Okay. How many people okay. have you brought to class that have sat there and go, Oh, they teach this down my church? Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> don't see it and just walk away, and they have no enlightenment. Right. No light. Thank you, Pam. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's like I, I know this, but when 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 he said those words, it was like, it's I guess it just didn't register. Like, like what is y'all we talking about? Like his secret hiding place. And like it just didn't click. With that mystery of iniquity, didn't he blind the minds of those? So if you're blinded, what are you in? You're in darkness. Darkness. But look at Lawrence. He's blinded, physically so, but not spiritually so. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of light. <laughs> okay. Yahweh gives us these. He has a lot of understanding than the world. You know, so this is an example, right? And when Yahshua was with Moses and, and they got to the Red Sea, he told them to be still and see the salvation of Yahweh. And Yahshua was right there. He was the light of the whole world right there, but they didn't see it. Mm -hmm. They didn't see it. He was looking at Moses. Right. And I did a search on darkness in the concordance, and I came up with 142 different places where he talks about darkness. And... Um, primarily in the well it's all over but you know he may it talks about like um in joshua he says that um 
they cried unto Yahweh. He put darkness between you and, you know, so he uses darkness to, to hide. I don't know if this is the right way to hide himself from those that he doesn't enlighten. I guess if I can say it that way, because what did he say? He didn't, he's not, he didn't come. He's not saving everyone, right? So yeah. those that are not enlightening are going to be in darkness and they're going to be in darkness forever. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Um, what, one more thing I wanted to throw out is, um, is, you know, a witness that we are down at the end of the age is, what is the problem with the atmosphere right now? Mm -hmm. There's too much carbon and uh, from all the pollution and mm -hmm. it's causing the global warming and um, it could cause the physical demise of the earth. So the end's declared from the beginning. You know, that's what's uh, going on right now. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Yeah. I wanted to ask like two things. Like sure. one of the things was when Dr. Kennedy said, I'm Yahweh. But the difference is between me and you, I'm conscious of it and you're not. That was one of the things. And when you were talking about the uh, volcanoes and I saw this on the History Channel where the, they sprue out the lava, then maybe over a course of years, a plant life comes up again on that mountain. So you see in the principle of death, burial, resurrection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else have any comments? Okay, um, then Sarah, you're up. How's my volume? Good. Okay. Let me know what chart you want. I want the Moses chart first, if that's okay, and then we'll come back to the 40 plate chart. Okay. If that's okay. Thanks. I got a delay too, so like it doesn't appear for me right away and then it suddenly appears. So I wonder if my internet is slow or something like Bob's. But anyway, I'm gonna describe it even though I can't see it. I'm assuming you guys can see it. <laughs> but um, on the Moses chart, where at the top where Moses is lying down and there's the cloud. And then it says he's having a panoramic vision of Elohim. And if you look at that, these are also the days of creation on this chart. And something handy about it is you have Elohim right there and it says Yahweh. And then it says like across the top of the head and then Elohim across the chest and then Yahshua. And then right next to that is the tabernacle. And then it shows the most holy place would be like Yahweh. The holy place would be like Elohim. And then the Corona Bout would be like Yahshua. And then all of these are broken up like that. And I know you guys realize that. But I just, this helps me to kind of understand that even though it's going to take us a really long time to go through this 40 plate chart. And even though it took Yahweh, this sounds funny. It took Yahweh seven days to break this down for Moses. It did not take Yahweh these days of creation to create this. He created it in the day. And I know you guys mentioned that just a little while ago, but that it would take just such, I mean, our brains to wrap around it, just look at how much time it takes to look at every single detail and looking at how, how does it correlate to the creator? How does it correlate to the tabernacle? How can we see it in the law and the prophets or the creation? And to just break these things down so carefully takes a really long time. But for Yahweh, it was all planned out. And then in an instant, he was able to just bring it to bring it, bring it and create it. It's like in the day. But anyway, I guess I'm working with the second day of creation, which is the division of the waters. Um, so if we could get back to that, um, this the 40 plate chart, thanks. So just as as we had seen kind of on that Moses chart, you can see the very top. Um, here would be um, representative of either the most holy place or Yahweh. And the middle one would be like 
the holy place or Elohim, and then the bottom one would be like the court roundabout or Yahshua. And this actually correlates really well to the Godhead and, and my understanding of, of the unity of the spirit, which is kind of how I looked at it. But before I even took the time to look things up in the textbook or anything, the thing that struck me is how Yahweh in the beginning spends all this time dividing and dividing and dividing. Like in the previous one, he divided the, the light from the darkness. And in this one, he's dividing the waters above from the waters beneath. And there's, so it's just all this division and division and division throughout the whole book too, right? He divides the children of Israel from the Egyptians and the rest of the world. He divides the sheep from the goats. It's just a constant division. He divides a woman from the man, but in the end, he's going to gather it back together in himself, you know? So it's kind of an interesting spending all this time dividing and then we move back into the gathering. You know, I think you can get that in, in Ephesians, the first chapter, but I'm not sure. But anyway, that was a sidebar. Um, taking a look here where it says second day, threefold waters. Um, a couple misconceptions I had in my youth at class is I thought the firmament was a, meant the land, like it was firm or something like this, but actually it's not, it doesn't mean that at all. You can either look it up in a dictionary or you can look it up in the textbook and the textbook has a glossary at the end of it. And that's where I looked it up. And the firmament means the sky, the clouds, the stars, the sun, the moon. It, it's, a, it's another word for like the heavens, um, if that makes sense. And if you read it, it actually, it's clear that that's what it is if you read the textbook and it's even clear in the scripture. So as we look at this one, um, could we read just that one part of the scripture that explains where how Yahweh did the division of the waters in Genesis 1 and 6 through 8, which is listed on the chart? Genesis 1 and 6. <clears throat> and Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And Elohim called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. So this help us, helped us understand that he called the firmament heaven. So it's not that, because I had thought, okay, so there's ground and below the ground is water and above, but he calls the firmament heaven. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the way that it describes this, it says the waters beneath the firmament, it lists this here as liquid. And it also shows like kind of water down in the earth, maybe. And here on the chart, it even lists like, um, maybe steam or groundwater, something like that. Um, and then in the middle, it talks about the, the middle or the intermediate would be like mist. It does say here semi-liquid. Well, Lisa was talking about semi-light and I saw that on my chart at, or my plate, it said semi-liquid. It was pretty easy to correlate that to an intermediate state between the two, which is what Elohim is. He's like an intermediate. Um, and then finally above, it talks about, um, this is, uh, the waters above would be vapor. So before we jump into the textbook, um, which talks about this, um, can you get, do you see your chart? Can you get your chart where the veil's getting pushed, pulled back? And there's the three name. there's the name of Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, and then it says Lord God and Jesus on it. Yeah, thank you. This chart is really helpful when it comes to understanding the unity of the spirit as well. And you'll notice right on it, just like it talked about the waters and, and just like it, you know, you look here at the very bottom, it says Yahshua, but it also says physical concrete. And then going up to Elohim, it says visionary or intermediate. And then up higher says pure spirit abstract, that's Yahweh. Or um, another way to describe it is on the, I guess in the middle of the chart, but to the right of that, Yahweh would be indiscernible. You cannot discern this. Um, Elohim would be a super incorporeal form, a form without a, a like a solid body, um, but still able to be seen like as a vision. And then beneath that, Yahshua says manifest in the flesh, physical form of Elohim. So this is kind of, it fits the, the second day really well. 
because the bot the waters um, beneath the firmament would be like Yahshua. This is like um, that he talks about um, if Yahshua is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we always in class would teach Yahshua would be like ice. You know, like if you looked at water, you'd have water, water vapor, and then you'd have ice, and ice would be solid, and that would be Yahshua. But you can also correlate um, Yahshua, in this case, to the waters beneath the firmament, just based on the way that the chart is written. And if you think about it, like, um, it, now, in this age, we need Yahshua in us for life. We need Yahshua in us for life. We're not really talking about um, Elohim as an external visionary shape. That's not what's really inside you. That's a title. And I understand that this is all the same um, spirit. There's a unity here, but that we say that Yahshua, the Holy Spirit, is what you need inside you. And, and Yahweh is just completely un, 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 inaccessible to you without going through Yahshua. But anyway, the waters beneath the firmament, those are those liquid waters. And that's what you need to drink to live. You're not going to live by taking in the vapor. You're not going to live by taking in the mist. Um, I mean, it's important to have it for like breathing and things, but when it comes down to like a daily drinking your water and he talks about the gospel and how if you, um, you know, the gospel is he who believes on, on me out of his belly will flow rivers of living water, you know, and the idea that that gospel the only way you can preach the gospel and the only way you actually can believe on him is if you have that spirit of Yahshua right within you. So anyway, um, it's kind of nice too, because on the left of the of this chart in the thin cloud, it says round trip coming from pure spirit, which would be like that abstract state or that vapor state through super incorporeal form, which would be like that um, mist-like state down and rain droplets and things and down into like the physical lakes and then back up again and that represents the water the hydrological cycle that was that is set up and that's how we get our water um on this earth to keep us plants animals alive and it also is like a filtration system as well to keep our water coming back clean and using it over and over again but anyway can we hop back to that um 40 plate chart and then in the textbook, I, I got this one um, out of there. It's talking about um, plate number seven. And I guess we're just reading our own textbook. Is that okay? Is that what we're doing? I don't mind unless, I don't know. Is that okay? <laughs> I just read it. Um, it talks about this is the division, as we had said, between the waters above the firmament and the waters beneath on the second day of creation. And it says in the textbook, as seen by Moses in a vision, because it's not that this was like literally like it took Yahweh an entire day to make the light divided from darkness. And then it took a whole nother day. But it's just that this was in his vision. It took this long for him to see and, and have it um, revealed to him. But anyway, him meaning Moses. Um, and then it says, as compared to the threefold pattern of the tabernacle. So once again, it just confirms. And I know that the chart is drawn this way as well, that we can see that this is a threefold um, image with, with, uh, the, that goes according to the tabernacle. Um, it says in the outer court, um, and it says plate 7E, which would be the bottom one, because there's those letters on the left, A, B, C, D, and E. Um, but anyway, um, 7E, the waters beneath the firmament cover the inorganic earth um, as compared to the outer court. And then it says plate IE. So now this is where I'm losing my like ability to see these, this, like I don't see plate IE, but I can see that it's saying that this is correlated to the altar of sacrifice and the labor. So the vessels here, but I'm not seeing the letter I on the chart. So if anybody- It's one E. Oh, it's, yeah. is it, so it's one E. One E, it's so, the tabernacle. Oh, so way back plate one, ha ha. Thanks team. That makes more sense. Cause there's, there's an altar in the tabernacle, right? Thank you, <laughs> dear God. Somebody just a typo. 
no, that's me not reading, <laughs> not reading correctly, but that's sweet. All right, the altar of sacrifice and the water and the labor. And then where it got, um, like, I guess quite interesting to me is when we actually went up from the court roundabout or the outer court into the um, holy place here. And it says, coming through the first veil is the holy place where we have the clouds containing much water in a semi-liquid form divided by the first veil, um, dividing between the waters in the heaven and the waters covering the face of the deep. So this I really thought was interesting because I didn't know there was a difference between mist and vapor, but I looked it up because I had this assignment with you guys. And if you look up mist, um, what is the difference between mist and vapor? Mist is actually water droplets suspended in air, whereas vapor is completely gaseous H2O or gaseous whatever. It doesn't have to be water, which is why I guess we call it water vapor if it's water. But anyway, mist is droplets suspended in the air, and this is the clouds. And it said that there, we have the clouds containing much water. So something kind of cool, and can you grab 1 Samuel 2 and 2, if you don't mind? I'm not hearing anybody. 1 it... Samuel 2 and 2. Thank you. There is none holy as Yahweh. For there is none besides thee, neither is there any rock like our Elohim. Yeah, so this is a scripture that we sometimes get when we're trying to explain how Yahweh is a unity. You can find scriptures that talk about how Yahweh is a rock, Elohim is a rock, Yahshua is a rock. We can see that fundamentally there are similarities here. And um, it's interesting because if you look up the word cloud... Uh, the etymology for cloud is rock. So that doesn't make a ton of sense, right? Here we have rock as the original meaning, but it was because back when the clouds would be floating in the sky and those big fluffy, I don't know, cumulus clouds, it looked like they were big hills or mountains. And so when they originally made the word for that, it means rock. Um, and this is Elohim, right? Um, also, if you look up the average set, like weight of a cloud because the kids were doing a riddle contest and it the question was something about you know I weigh more than a whale but I can fly over a mountain and you know they were just really trying to figure it out and it's a cloud is the answer because clouds are really heavy like I looked up the average weight for a like an average cumulus cloud it's like a million pounds so it's very large much larger than I would ever imagine could float so here we have the middle would be the intermediate or like Elohim and it's explaining this is where we have the clouds containing much water in a semi-liquid form and there is substance there you know there is a shape and form to clouds and uh you can't stand on them of course right we we know that we understand that's cartoons where creatures would go and they would fly to, fly up in the clouds and they could stand on them but there is still weight and substance to them when i was young in class there was a controversy between about um yahweh elohim took on shape and form at some point right and the idea that he took on shape and form and we can see that that's those clouds have substance they have a form but it's not um it's not the type of form that has a solid body to it but there's still substance there so anyway um that he has shape and form and it, it took on that shape and form so then finally it says um Finally, passing through the second veil, also called the firmament or heaven, we enter the most holy place, a type of the third heaven, where we have moisture in a gaseous substance and invisible to the naked eye. And then um, on there it says vapor. And it makes sense that this vapor, this gas is invisible to the naked eye because Yahweh is indiscernible, inscrutable. He is abstract and we cannot... Um, 
we cannot discern him with our senses. Um, unlike the fact that you can see clouds and mist and fog, which would be like that visionary shape and form of Elohim, you know, or like the, the more, even more solid idea of like water that is, you know, floated in rivers or uh, groundwater or whatever in the bottom. It says, um, this is operated by the law of the spirit. And then the, I was wondering why there, you've got that heart with the spirit law on the top of all of these um, top plates here. And it correlates it in the textbook to say, um, this is like electric energy um, causing lightning to flash. And this is where we get lightning up here, um, causing lightning to flash um, as comparable to, and I've heard it pronounced the Shekinah and I've heard it pronounced the Shekinah, but it's that vision of that light in the most holy place on the day of atonement that we just talked about tonight too, that that lightning way up here um, is, is showing forth that idea of that, that electrical energy. And I was thinking to myself, why is that mentioned here in the water chart? But when it comes down to it, um, I looked up how does lightning work? <laughs> And it says ice crystals, water droplets bump together and they make static electricity. And so you can't have the lightning without the, this, um, the water. The water is vital to be able to create um, that electrical energy up here. And so that kind of fits with that, um, the water, the second day, the threefold waters. So anyway, um, did I really do much more than that? No, I was really hardcore into the Godhead. The only scripture I saw on there was when it actually explained it. Um, but the unity of the spirit is really um, interesting here with this. And uh, that's kind of what I got out of that. And there's still 20 minutes left. So hopefully that's okay. That was great. I, I thought that was really well done. I've enjoyed everybody's comments and uh, what they got into. Uh, did anybody anybody want to comment? I do. I thought it was interesting when Sarah said that too brought out the unity of the spirit because on the first day, um, at the end of that section, it refers you to First John five and eight. So, and that's and there are three that bear witness in the earth the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. And that is in the first day talking about. So I was, I just mentioned, I just saw that in a textbook. It's at the end of the first day, plate six. Mm -hmm. So and then Sarah brought up the unity of the Godhead, just seeing that throughout these plates. Definitely. Yeah. And I want to say something about what Sarah said about the rock. Um, going back to, you don't have to right now, what Bobby was talking about, that cloud, that phenomenal cloud, um, going through that Red Sea was light unto Israel, darkness unto um, Pharaoh and his host. But also you got Yahoshua, who is the Holy Spirit, who is the rock, you know what I mean, is, is wrapped up in that cloud, if you will. So you see in that cloud and rock, you can see how it goes together. From a natural standpoint, it, like she said, it don't seem like, why would cloud mean rock? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But <laughs> you, when you see that Yahshua is the rock, you know, and he's wrapped up in that cloud, He's, he's, he's in the bosom of Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? So you can see mm -hmm. how that cloud and rock would be synonymous because Joshua was the rock. Mm -hmm. I wonder, how do they measure a cloud? <laughs> how do they weigh a cloud though? Where do they get that? It's interesting. I never even thought of the weight so much of a cloud there is a lot of water in them, but how do they do that, Sarah? Did you find? Did you was? Did you see that or find anything on how they actually do that? Yeah. Um. What I did is I looked up the, I looked up the just the U.S. like weather 
people because I figured they know what they're talking about. <laughs> and uh, it says that it talked about how many, so they said a cubic kilometer cloud. So this is how they're measuring it. And they said that would contain 1 billion cubic meters. And they did, they just did math. They said, if you multiply that, you figured this many drops of water in an average cloud, they, they just measured it. So they measured drops of water and they measured how many drops are in this, this space and how much would that weigh? And then they just multiplied it by, by how large a cloud actually is. Mm -hmm. I do see the math in there too. Mm. I thought that was interesting that it could weigh 1.1 million pounds when they converted the kilograms. That's heavy. That's really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and then to think that it's suspended in air to weigh that much. Isn't that just like phenomenal? Yeah, it is. Uh, oh. I'm sorry, go on. <laughs> I was thinking back back there with Moses, where they where Yahweh was pouring out the plagues, and one was of hailstone and fire. Well, hailstone, where he poured out one plague and it didn't destroy, and then he had the other plague where it rained down hail and fire, you know, from the from the sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. It's really interesting, though, that, that that just blows my mind, the weight of something like that, you know, uh -huh. and uh, just being floating around. <laughs> wow. 1.1 million pounds floating around, only Yahweh. <laughs> you would have to take into consideration how large a cloud <laughs> are they talking about. Mm. It would have to be a, a huge cloud mass, I would think, for that kind of weight. Mm. Pick up a bucket of water, you'll find out how heavy water can be. Yeah, it is heavy. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Interesting. Just like a balloon filled with water. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, well, we have. 13 minutes left. Um, Tony, do you want to you want to start on yours or if in, unless somebody else wants to uh, comment further? So why don't you go ahead, Tony, just get started and then you can finish the next class. Uh, OK, um, hold on a sec. It's um, I probably be better off wearing this glasses if that's possible. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's fine. I, I okay. didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, that's okay. It's okay. It's just something came up. <laughs> I wanna, but uh, uh, I appreciate I, the opportunity. I have a quick question. Somebody mentioned something about hail and fire. Which plate was that talked about on? No, he, he was just yeah, he was just talking about um, back there with the children of Israel in Egypt. There was one of the plagues. Right. Oh, I, I was, thought he was comparing it to something on one of the plates. I think uh, the uh, lightning and stuff that Sarah was talking about, wasn't that it, Gary? Was that Gary? Mm -hmm. No, I was just curious because... Um, the seventh plague is the hail and fire, and this is plate seven. So I thought he was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Just it is. Oh, okay. That's what he was referring to. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And back in with the plagues. Yeah. Yeah. There was another question, Gary, you had, and I, I'm sorry that I might have missed it. Understanding what your question was earlier when you had asked. Now, I was just making a comment about what Joel has said about the uh, volcanoes um, when they erupt. Um, I had seen on the History Channel where that after a certain amount of time, they, um, um, they, you know, the death burial resurrection, once it explodes, then plant life will grow after so many years start to come up 
on the mountain from, you know, after the, mm -hmm. the what does that matter? Eruption. Yeah, after the eruption, it would it would still be life um, in a death, you know, you just yeah. like mm -hmm. death, bear, resurrection. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah that, that's a great point. And, um, you know, it, de it depends on the type of volcano, but the, the ash from certain volcanoes is actually very, very nutritious and uh, for plant life, you know, but um, so yeah, I, that, that, that's, that's a great principle, death, burial, resurrection. Mm -hmm. And really, really the, the comment you made too about Dr. Kinley saying that he knows who he is and, um, you know, he's uh, conscious of it and that he's conscious of it. And really that's why we come to class is we are, our eyes are being opened mm -hmm. and we're beginning to, to see. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I think it was Sherry that mentioned, you know, you try to tell somebody about this and, and, uh, you know, what, <laughs> the, the, the look on people's face that I've gotten over the years, it's like, that's darkness. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's just stingy yeah. and black darkness, you know, because yeah. they, they can't, they can't, can't fathom a thing that you're saying when you're no. preaching this gospel. And um, it's, it's such a witness to us. And, you know, you, you, you come into class for a while and, you know, you, if, if, if you ever start to take it for granted, just try to tell somebody about it sometime. You know, people can't even see through the names, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, they might acknowledge even that they're the names, but they won't use them, no. you know? No. It's, it, it's you know, and, and you look at all the things and you, you know, I, I don't usually talk to people about the, the consummation, but, um, all the things that are going on in the news right now, you know, with the, the, the shootings and, uh, you know, the, the, this COVID, I mean, basically the whole world was shut down by something you cannot see with your eyes. You know, mm -hmm. you can't see a virus. The only way you, you can't even see a virus through a microscope, they're that small you have to get an electron microscope to be able to, to see it. You see, I, I work with viruses um, in, in, in my job. And, um, you know, we, we don't usually look at them in the electron microscopes, but we look at what they do, you know, when they infect cells and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's like Yahweh shut down the whole world with something you can't even see with your natural eyes. <laughs> you know and and that's 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 you know that that's some power you know you know and and um you know the other thing too you know you know like i like i mentioned that that carbon you can't see the carbon in the air you know and yet the hope that the planet is is dying um because of it uh, i don't know if you guys know this but Last year, there were more named stones, storms than there has ever been in history. And they've been keeping track for 170 years. Matter of fact, they ran out of names and had to start using the Greek alphabet. Mm -hmm. And uh, went, went halfway through the Greek alphabet even. And this is all caused by this carbon in the atmosphere that you can't even see with your with your natural eyes you know and um you know so uh and and and, and if you look at the way um our politics are okay it, it that this country is so divided it can't even function you know and that the 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 uh, you know the Republicans just refuse to go along with the Democrats, even when it's something they want, like that stimulus. You know they wanted people to get the stimulus, okay? Because they could say, "Hey, I got you the stimulus," and then they get people that that you know uh, 
even the Republicans wanted that money. Who doesn't want free money, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can send me stimulus every month. I, I'm fine with that. I, I won't get offended, you know, but they can't even agree on that, even though, you know, everybody wants it and it's good for the economy. Mm -hmm. So there's so many divisions and, you know, the, the, the divisions that are, that are going on are, are symbolic of the divisions that are going on in class too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we try to, we, you know, I don't know if you've had the experience of talking to somebody that is, you know, that believes the LA doctrine, if I can put it that way. And they're offended when we call it the LA doctrine, by the way, that they, they don't want us to call it that. Well, we can't call it Dr. Kinley's doctrine right. because he didn't teach that. And we can't call it Yahshua the Messiah's doctrine because he didn't teach that. You see, so the only thing we can call it is the LA doctrine, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, and um, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it looks like um, 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 Carla uh, Kinley Davis in her, in her, um, you know, her, what she's doing, and I don't want to talk about this openly, but um, uh, it, it's having, it's having some, is having an effect, okay? And um, we may not have to worry about anything. See, Yahweh's just taking care of that for us. I'll just put it that way. I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, uh, disparage anybody or anything like that, you know. But um, there are. It's it's not wrong to say that there are divisions going on uh, in in this in the school, you know. Hope you know. There's nothing I would like more than than to be reconciled, you know, with 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 people. You know, I don't want to. You know, it, but um, you know, we are coming down to the end of the age, and it's just, you know, Yahweh says that, uh, or Yahshua said that he came not to bring peace on earth; that he came to bring a sword and division, and we've seen that with our natural family. Okay, we've seen that with our physical families. Okay, that's that's not hard to see. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm lucky to have Jennifer and Chuck in class. You know, I'm blessed to have some family members in class. Um, you know, but uh, you know, the rest of my family they don't want to hear anything. They don't want to hear anything about that. That there there has been a division, but they're just my physical family. They're not the real family. You see, you guys are my are my real family, because you see, we all have the. You see, <laughs> it's 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 like uh, Jabo always says to me. He says, he said he calls me. He says that uh, I'm his brother from another mother. Mm -hmm. He said because we have the same father, and that's Yahweh, you know, and we do. We are family, you know, and unfortunately, there's a, a division in the family as far as the the school is as a whole you know and um it's kind of interesting and someone brought this out in an email uh that um you know uh they don't uh they don't want us to use the trademarks in and uh in you know the, of of the idmr and then what you have out here going on in the physical creation is uh, Trump has now told his followers that they can't use his name and his trademarks. Okay, so you have that going on from a natural standpoint. Because yeah. all the Republicans want to claim Trump as their daddy. And uh, he won't let them use his trademarks, his name. So it's kind of interesting. That that's going on from from a natural standpoint but um you know you can see where you know a lot of the things that we're discussing at the beginning are manifesting now down at the end of the age okay and um and and the other thing about this too that is so beautiful and, and what sarah and really everybody touched on um is is that all these things are just the godhead on on Every single day, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua manifested all, you know, in, in, in every day of creation, you know, and in, in, in the pattern. That, that's, you know, the principles that we're seeing. So anyways, I, uh, we're out of time. 
So uh, um, the moderator could uh, excuse us. Oh, before we stop, before we stop. Um, Whoops, I was muted. <laughs> All right, so that concludes our uh, 40 plate chart workshop for this week. And we really appreciate our visitors and everybody um, contributing. It was a really fun class tonight. We hold classes here every Wednesday from seven to nine here on Zoom and every Sunday from 11 to one. So let's all um, stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple of verses in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.